no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raider Sport. Today's show is presented by Magic Spoon. These guys not only made healthy cereal, they perfected it. I want you to think about these numbers because we love numbers, right? Especially for the Raiders Report. You're talking about 12 grams of protein, 13 grams of protein, sometimes 14 grams of protein per bowl, zero grams of sugar, four net carbs. I mean, this stuff is absolutely insane, and it tastes really hella good. So coming up here on today's show, we're going to be breaking down some of the news that happened at training camp today. And since the Raiders released their official media depth chart, I'm going to give you the five biggest winners and the five biggest losers on that depth chart. With a lot of stuff to cover, I want you guys to be sitting tight, ready to rock and roll. The Raiders did end up signing a quarterback today, and people were like, oh my gosh, who the hell is Kate Cookus? Well, 6'4", 205 pounder from Northern Arizona, did not play at all last season. The reason why the Raiders brought him in has nothing to do with Nate Biederman, has nothing to do with Mariota, nothing to do with Derek Carr. They wanted an extra body for the preseason. That's it. So with that move, they also had to release a wide receiver. And they let go of slot guy Trey Quinn. The biggest reason here, Dylan Stoner was kind of beating him out in terms of more of depth play. DJ Turner surpassed him on the depth chart as well. And when they were talking about keeping some slot receivers, the only two slot guys that have really earned Derek Carr's trust thus far, obviously Hunter Renfro and Willie Sneed. Six players were not at Raiders practice today. Jalen Richard, he's out indefinitely with that foot injury. Alex Ellis, Darren Waller. Darius Stills, defensive lineman, UDFA, Carl Joseph, and Quentin Jefferson. These were the six players not at Raiders practice today, at least not on the practice field. What's starting to start, I guess, create some Raiders rumors, if you will, has been the injury to Darren Waller. And the issue here is the Raiders really haven't said anything. Waller hasn't said anything. And everyone just seems not worried about it whatsoever. Yet, I'm like, you're talking about probably our best offensive weapon, Hasn't been on the practice field the last four practices. Not only that, there's been two rest periods in between those practices. So essentially, Waller's been out almost an entire week, and there hasn't been any updates on it whatsoever. As soon as we do get some updates, I'll keep you updated. But as far as I'm concerned, it's he should be okay. But I'd be very surprised if he ends up playing against the Seahawks this week. So what I want you guys to do is help a brother out, right? Raider Nation is family. When you walk down the street, if you see somebody in Raiders gear, man, you better shout Raiders as loud as you freaking can and if that person responds what I want you to do is be like hey man do you watch the Raiders report because that's the type of people I want watching our live shows those are the type of people I want down in the comments I'm trying to get to 81,000 I'm trying to get to Tim Brown subscribers and all I need is 676 more more subs equals more videos and with the season right around the corner I promise you you will want to subscribe all right so we got some more news coming up here it's around Daniel Carlson he's been on the COVID list he can't back today which is obviously good news considering the fact that he's our main kicker he's going to be out there in the preseason and that's something that I do really want to see Trayvon Mullen he was banged up on Sunday if you guys didn't see it him and Zay Jones they collided and Anytime you see a collision during practice, it's scary. The fact that fans were in the stadium was an amazing thing to see, but seeing two of our good players get hit, obviously not what you want. John Gruden called it a stinger. So what I was really trying to look at today at camp was, how was Mullen playing? How does he look? Does he look you know, maybe hesitant? And he looked nothing like that whatsoever. He had a hell of a day today. Two interceptions, and anytime you're seeing that type of production, especially from your main corner, that's what I like to see. Now, there was a little bit of an injury scare with Nick Kwiatkowski that happened today. So he was playing defense, obviously. Bo Scarborough, who the Raiders signed last week, he's this bigger running back. They want to be able to try to be a little bit more physical. Bo was rolling over some people, landed on Nick Kwiatkowski's leg, Quit had to leave the field momentarily. The injury doesn't seem to be serious. I haven't gotten any more updates. I haven't gotten any news breaks on it whatsoever. So I was going to say that Kwiatkowski, he left the field. He finished up practice. He should be ready to rock and roll. All right, y'all, so today's show, again, is presented by Magic Spoon. And when I say Magic Spoon, if you think of a spoon being able to grant wishes, no, that's not what it is. We're talking about high-quality cereal. MagicSpoon.com slash Raiders is how you get the hookup. $5 off your very first order. What I want you guys to think about, though, was all the cereal that you ate as a kid. 
Now imagine that cereal being healthy for you. That's what Magic Spoon is. So if you want to go out and get the Frosted, they're kind of like my favorite. If somebody asked me also, like, if you could compare what Frosted tastes like, have you guys ever had, like, cake batter flavored anything? Imagine that, and it's healthy for you. I'm talking low carb, high protein, sweet and delicious. This cereal is so good that I think even Trent Brown could lose 30 pounds on it. Seriously, that's how good it is. If you're wondering how to get the hook up, the link is available for y'all in the comments. It's also in the description as well. It's magicspoon.com slash Raiders. If you have any other questions whatsoever about some flavors, I know they just released a whole bunch of new ones like cinnamon's very good. Uh, maple waffle has been a very popular one. Cookies and cream. I mean, think about this stuff, guys. If you're a late night snacker like me, I promise, I promise, I promise, you're going to absolutely love Magic Spoon. But seriously, if you have any questions, hit me up on IG. All right, we got some more updates here on the Raiders report. Derek Carr threw his first INT today, and I understand that all interceptions kind of go against the QB. This one wasn't Carr's fault. This one hit Brian Edwards right in the hands. It deflected off his hands and then landed right in the breadbasket of Trayvon Mullen. So somebody else who's been struggling a little bit at the quarterback position has been Mariota. Before today's practice, Mariota had two interceptions, both against Krakowski. Well, he was picked off twice again today. The first time was he was picked off against the cornerback, and there was some, I guess, jokes going on around the, the Raiders' sidelines. He was like, oh, he didn't get picked by a linebacker. The first one was Rasul Douglas, who right now is listed as the third cornerback behind Trayvon. So, like, that was a big play for him. The other interception up against Marcus Mariota today was Dalen Levitt. Levitt's one of these guys that continues to figure out a way how to make the 53-man roster for the Raiders, whether that's special teams or not. He's listed as the second free safety behind Merrick, though if he makes this roster, I will be surprised. So, one of the biggest things that happened today at camp was turnovers. The defense was forced in turnovers, which obviously you like to see. One of those turnovers was committed by John Brown. He fumbled today, and the person that caused that fumble was Devontae Bosby. For this Raiders team, you are looking for them to be able to create more turnovers because if the offense can get more shorter fields, that's obviously going to lead to more points. It's also going to lead to not giving up 30 points every single day. More fumbles coming at you. Matt Bushman, the UDFA out of BYU. He's been a little up and down thus far in camp. I don't know if he's going to make the 53-man roster, but fumbling is certainly not going to help. Who caused that fumble? Other UDFA. Sean Crawford out of Notre Dame, who also has been having an up-and-down camp. So the uh, last interception that we're going to talk about here is from Nevin Lawson. So Lawson's going to be the starter more than likely in the slot. Not those first two weeks. Remember, y'all, he's suspended. But he has been the top guy in that slot when the Raiders are running, either the nickel base or what have you. But he picked off Nathan Peterman. And when I tell you this number here, some of you guys are like, no way that happened. But yeah, the Raiders defense forced seven. Everyone down in the comments right now, spam seven. Seven turnovers today. And actually, there was an opportunity to get nine. The offense landed on two more fumbles. So essentially, the Raiders could have came away with nine turnovers. And I get it. It's practice. Some of it's 11 on 11. It's a little bit different than game speed. But that's a very positive sign. You and I both know that the Raiders defense the last few years has been really bad. Even in camp, there wasn't too much hype. You heard a lot more hype today, and that's what I like to see out of this Raiders D. Now, if you guys haven't already, hit me up on IG. It's at MitchellRens365. If you're curious where to get some Magic Spoon cereal, if you love the T-shirt that I'm wearing, if you just want to talk Raiders with me, dude, the DMs, they're open for a reason. So please hit me up at MitchellRens365. All right, y'all, we got 586 people watching this live. Coming up right now, we're getting into some depth chart winners and losers. The reason why I wanted to go ahead and do this show or segment, if you will, is simply because the Raiders media team released the depth chart and so many people were overreacting to it. Let me just tell you this right now. The depth chart that's released by the media for the media is by no means whatsoever the depth chart that the Raiders are going to go with. They simply do it because they have to with the preseason coming up. Now, I know this is really hard to read, and I'm not going to keep this on screen for long, but this was the media release of the depth chart. I just want you all to know what to look for if after the show you want to check it out on the community tab, on my Instagram. Hell, it's also on my Twitter. So who are some of these Raiders depth chart winners? I'm going to throw out the name Brian Edwards. Maybe you heard of him. He's listed right now as the wide receiver two behind Henry Ruggs. The reason why he is a winner here, if he's out there on the field and he's starting over John Brown, he's going to get a lot more production. Now, he's looked very good, though today he didn't look very good at all. Let's go to Tanner Muse, linebacker. And Muse has been one of these dudes here 
that continues to impress coaches, and he's continuing to impress me. If the season were to start today, I've actually heard from people that I trust that he'd be the starting strong side linebacker in a 4-3 defense. Think about that for a second. Let's go to Nicholas Morrow, the starting middle linebacker. The reason why he's a winner here, I love Nick Kwiatkowski. Most Raider fans would actually probably say Kwiatkowski's the best linebacker on our team. I would also say that. However, right now Morrow has been outplaying Nick in terms of being that great middle linebacker in a Gus Bradley system. It sounds like he could end up being a captain. It sounds like he could end up wearing the green dot. Nate Hobbs, rookie cornerback out of Illinois, listed as the backup to Nevin Lawson in the slot. What does that mean for Hobbs? It kind of sounds like right now he's going to get a lot of playing time week one, week two with Nevin Lawson ultimately suspended those first two games. The last winner is Keyshawn Nixon, a player that I have not really been talking too much about this offseason because I actually thought he was an afterthought. Shout out to Nixon for posting on his IG basically like don't always believe what you read or don't always believe what you see. Which, sure, that's definitely the truth, but he's listed as the cornerback two behind Mullen. So the fact that he's listed that high, that would indicate to me that he can make the team. Though, my most recent 53-man roster projection, I didn't have him on it. So what I want you guys to do right now is name a player that you think, after looking at that depth chart, is the biggest winner. Whether they're on the offensive side of the football, whether they're on the defensive side of the football. Name a player on the uh, on the depth chart that you believe is a winner. Anytime we talk about winners, part of my job to also talk about the losers. So John Brown, the fact that he was behind Brian Edwards, the fact that he's listed as a wide receiver three, technically the wide receiver four, because obviously Renfro is going to get that start in the slot. Not what I like to see from Smokey Brown. I'm going to go with Gerald McCoy here as the next one. And this is more of just because if you looked at the depth, you'd be like, oh my God, he's the fourth string nose tackle. This is going to be one of those where they're just letting him get up to speed. He's also about to change his number to 93. I know right now he's rocking 61. He's going to come out with 93. But Gerald McCoy, people are overreacting. He's going to end up making the team. I can almost promise you that. One guy that I don't know if he's going to be making the team, it's Darius Stills, who just continues to fall further and further down the depth chart. Wasn't practicing today, which, again, not helping him whatsoever. Nick Wachowski. Interviewed him about two weeks ago. In my conversations with him, it sounded like he was going to be the main middle linebacker. Was going to be the player that's probably going to come away with the most snaps out of all the linebackers on the team. The fact that now he's listed as second string, that would be pretty worrisome to me and maybe even to him as well. Let's go to Rasul Douglas, though. This is going to be one of those dudes where as soon as the Raiders signed him, I was like, dude, I'm telling you and all, you're going to absolutely love him. He's going to make the 53. He's listed behind Keyshawn Nixon. If you're listed behind Keyshawn Nixon, that's probably not the best indicator of whether or not you're going to make this team. So the fact that he's listed as a third-string cornerback, even though he had a pick today, that makes him a loser, according to the Raiders' latest media depth chart. All right, y'all, so what I want you to do now is name a player that is a loser from looking at that depth chart. If you need some extra names to throw in there, please go ahead and do so. Essentially, what I do on the Raiders board is I open it up to y'all to be able to get your comments in. So I want a loser and a winner from the depth chart. 